Hi guys, hello and good evening and welcome to this webinar. We'll look at some CR questions today. We'll look at analogies in case you're not clear what analogies are. We'll see with examples. Um, the objective is very specific. We'll look at only those answer choices, select few answer choices that deal with analogies in critical reasoning questions on the GMAT. Hmm. Real quick, hello, in case we, guys, we haven't met before, my name is Anish Pasi. Um, I'm a GMAT coach. You'll find details about me and my offerings on the website, the gmatcode.com. All right, here's your first question. I'll give you some time to go through it. Let me just clarify a couple of things. One, notice there's only one answer choice on the screen. So we don't have five answer choices anymore. There's only one. So what one thing I've done is I've removed the word most from the question stem. So if you're worried, oh, but what if there's another cho answer choice that does a better job? Don't worry about that. So now, for example, here, your job is simply to figure out whether this answer choice strongly indicates that the plan will be a success or not. So one answer choice in isolation, your job is to figure out whether this answer choice is correct or not. All right, I'll launch a poll and um, go ahead. Okay. I have one more question for you and then we'll discuss these together. I have one more poll before we discuss. Now, the two questions that I asked you, tell me if you marked even one of them wrong, what was your reason? Was it one of these? Or if you mark both of them correct, mark the fifth answer choice. All right, cool. Now, let's address uh, the first reason here. Such answers are usually wrong, right? Very few of you selected that answer choice, but I've seen that quite commonly on GMAT Club. Oh, this one is wrong because such answers are usually wrong, right? And I've had quite a few one-on-one -on -one students also give a similar reason. On the GMAT, such answers are usually wrong, something like that. But then first question I typically ask them back is that, so a beginner can never get such a question correct if someone's just starting off preparing for the GMAT and that person doesn't have that history with questions, doesn't remember other answers, hasn't gone through other questions. So then such a beginner can't get such questions correct. That's one question. Also, another question I ask is, well, in case such answer choices are usually wrong, why was the first such answer choice wrong? There must have been an underlying reason, right? Okay, fine. Now we might say that they've been wrong many times. Why was the first one wrong ever? What was the reason there? And why can't we apply reasons to the new questions? Why do the new questions have to be answered on the basis of a track record. So I don't agree with this reasoning. Oh, it's wrong because it's usually wrong. It doesn't make a lot of logical sense. Hmm. Now let's address the, the big ones. 53% of you said that this is a reason. 61% of you said this is a reason for why at least one of the two um, questions had an incorrect answer choice. The other state may not be similar. Uh, I'll address this with the lane restrictions question specifically. Let's look at the third reason here, just because it has happened for others. What's the guarantee it will happen for our city as well? Hmm. What's the guarantee? And that's a very valid question. What's the guarantee? Just because it's happened in these other cities, in this other state, whatever, in these other regions, what's the guarantee? And you're right, the answer is, there is no guarantee, no doubt, no worries there, no guarantee. But I do have a follow-up question. Why do we need a guarantee? Hmm? Are we looking for something that confirms the, the argument for us? Or are we looking for something that strengthens or weakens, whatever the question might be, the argument for us? Why do we care about a guarantee? Hmm? So let's take a 
couple of minutes to understand what these terms strengthen and weaken mean in the first place. And yeah, those of you who've taken sessions with me before would know this. Strengthen and weaken. Regular English meaning. We're not looking for any specific GMAT meaning. GMAT doesn't have a new meaning for these regular words. GMAT uses the meaning that we, that anyway these words have. So what is that meaning? What does strengthen mean? What does weaken mean? Hmm? So tell me, and you can use the chat window for this. Tell me if we are to strengthen something, does that mean we have to make that thing indestructible? On the flip side, if we have to weaken something, does that mean we have to destroy that thing? No, what we're dealing with is what happens to our confidence compared with before, or rather what happens to the strength compared with before. Let's say there's a structure and I ask you to strengthen that structure. So basically what I've asked you to do is increase the strength of the structure compared with before. Increase the strength. That's all. Am I asking you that the structure should now be indestructible? No, the strength should be higher than before. Similarly, if I ask you to weaken a structure, I'm asking you to reduce the strength compared with before. Compared with before. So the question to ask becomes, compared with before, has the strength increased? When we're talking about a structure. For an argument, the question becomes, compared with before, has my belief in the argument increased? Or has my confidence in the argument increased? What we are dealing with is what happens compared with before. Now, this phrase is extremely important here. Once I learn this new piece of information, do I now believe more than I did earlier? Do I now believe as much as I did earlier? Or do I now believe less than I did earlier? That's what strengthen and weaken are all about, right? Strengthen means the strength should have increased. Weaken mean, means the strength should have reduced. That's all. We don't need to take things to an extreme point. We're not looking for something that destroys the argument or we're not looking for something that makes the argument perfectly logical. We're not looking for that. We're looking for increasing or decreasing our confidence in the argument. That's what strengthen and weaken mean in regular English. Hmm. So with this understanding compared with before, what happens to your confidence? Let's say I ask you this question. Can Dan read English? This guy here is Dan. Can this guy read English? Right now, we don't know anything about this person. Now, I'll present certain statements one by one. You have to tell me, compared with before, do you believe more? Which would mean, yeah, this one increases your belief or strengthens your belief that Dan can read English. Or compared with before, you believe less, which would mean... Now, Dan can read English has weakened for you or there's no change, no impact. Remember, compared with right now, when you don't know anything about this guy. So, if you learn that Dan has not had any formal education, with this new piece of information, what happens to your belief? The belief goes down. Now I believe less than I did earlier in that he can read English. Now let's be clear. Just because this person has not had any formal education, does that mean that for sure he can't read English? No. Maybe he, he learned on his own or at home or some other way. That's That possibility is there. However, once this new piece of information comes in, once we learn that he's not had any formal education, compared with when we didn't have this information, my belief compared with before goes down. Now I'm thinking, oh, in that case, maybe he doesn't know how to read English. Is it possible that he still knows? Yes, it's possible, no doubt. But compared with before, now my confidence level has slightly gone down. 
Hmm. Let's look at this statement. What if we learn that Dan has two siblings? Then what happens to your belief that he can read English? No change. Okay, he has two siblings. This statement has no impact, right? My confidence level remains where it was. No change. Cool. Let's think of one more situation. What if, what if we learn that this guy went to school for 12 years? Then can he read English? What happens to our confidence? If he's gone to school for 12 years, our confidence increases. Now, let's be very clear. Is it, is it not possible that he went to a Marathi medium school? Yes, that's possible. Is it not possible that he used to go to school, but he never studied, never looked at books? Yes, that's possible. So no one is debating these possibilities. However, once this new piece of information comes to light, my confidence goes up. Oh, he went to school for 12 years. Then perhaps he knows how to read English. So the first one weakens, the second one has no impact, and the third one strengthens. This is what strengthen and weaken mean compared with before, has my confidence changed at all? Let's think of another situation. Let's say you're, you're going online, you, you plan on buying something, or you're looking for a coach for GMAT, let's say, and you come across a testimony or testimonials. Oh, this guy is wonderful. This guy is great. This course is great. This, that, a lot of positives. By after reading those positives, after reading those positives, would your confidence in the coach change? If so, in what direction? It increases. It increases. But then the same question still, still applies. Oh, so this guy had a great result. What's the guarantee? I will also have a great result. The answer is there is no guarantee. Maybe that person is in a very different situation that you are, than you are in. Or maybe you both are in the same situation, but the way he, he understood things was different than the way you understand things. So no guarantee. Yet, our confidence goes up after reading testimonials. We read reviews on Amazon and everywhere. Right? Because our confidence changes. So guarantee? No. Confidence change, yes. The same thing is what we are doing in CR strengthen and weaken questions. Are we looking for a guarantee? No. But do I now believe more than before or less than before? If yes, that means that that answer choice either strengthens or weakens. Hmm. Now, with this framework in mind, compared with before what happens to our confidence level. With this framework in mind, let's go back to the passage and then the answer choice. Hmm. Let's look at the passage first. The heavy traffic in Masana is a growing drain on the city's economy. It's a problem for the economy. The clogging of the streets of the central business district alone cost the economy more than $1.2 billion over the past year. In one year itself, this, this part of heavy traffic, clogging off streets of central business district alone, this one thing alone has cost over $1.2 billion. Hmm. In order to address this problem, what problem? The problem that the heavy traffic is causing on the city's economy. In order to address this problem, officials plan to introduce congestion pricing, okay? By which drivers would pay to enter the city's most heavily trafficked areas during the busiest times of the day. All right. So their plan is to introduce congestion pricing to achieve what? To achieve that the heavy traffic should not impact our economy so negatively anymore. The, the negative impact on economy of heavy traffic should be reduced in order to address this problem, right? That whole problem should get addressed. Hmm. So 
which of the following, if true, would strongly indicate that the plan will be a success. What's the plan? Congestion pricing um, in, this, in these particular areas. That's the plan. How would we define success? The problem should get addressed, right? In order to address this problem. What's the problem? The problem, the problem was that heavy traffic uh, has a negative impact on the city's economy. Hmm. So we understand now what the plan is. We understand how to define success. And let's make sure we got the question correctly. Which of the following, if true, would strongly indicate, indicate that the plan will be a success? So this was the answer choice. Now, remember, the question is, does this answer choice indicate that the plan will be a success? What's the answer choice saying? In other urban areas, congestion pricing has strongly encouraged carpooling. What's carpooling? They've explained that to us. In other areas, congestion pricing has strongly encouraged carpooling. Now, compared with before, now I'm thinking, oh, in that case, perhaps congestion pricing would strongly encourage carpooling in Masana also. And therefore, perhaps because of carpooling, perhaps the traffic problem will start getting solved. What does carpooling mean? Sharing rides. So instead of each person using their own ride, now they're sharing. So maybe fewer cars. Now, let's also be clear. Is it possible that it happened in those areas? It won't happen here. Yes, that's possible. Is it possible that despite carpooling happening, the overall number of vehicles still doesn't reduce? Maybe that's possible. Although it seems very unlikely, but it is possible. Those possibilities do exist. There's no debate there at all. Yet, once this new piece of information comes to light, do I now believe more than before, less than before, or as much as before that the plan will be a success? I believe more than before. Therefore, this answer choice does indicate that the plan will be a success. It indicates that. It's not confirming this for us. Did this explanation make sense? Is this clear now? Why C is correct? Chalo. All right, that was one. Let's look at another. So this one is correct. Hmm. A moderately large city is redesigning its central downtown area and is considering a plan that would reduce the number of lanes for automobiles and trucks. The city is redesigning the area and it's considering a plan that would reduce these particular lanes for cars and trucks and increase those for bicycles and pedestrians. Those, what those are, ah, the lanes. So increase lanes for bicycles and pedestrians reduce lanes for trucks and automobiles. That's their plan. The intent is to, ah, the objective, the intent, right? The goal is to attract more workers and shoppers to downtown businesses by making downtown easier to reach and more pleasant to move around in. Okay, so get rid of or reduce the lanes for cars and trucks increase lanes for bicycles and pedestrians that way the objective is that uh, or, or rather through that uh, downtown would be easier to reach and to move around in they anticipate and then the objective of attracting more workers and shoppers would be met that's what the author is saying hmm. all right that's the passage which of the following would if true strongly support the prediction that the plan would achieve its goal. Which one would support this prediction? What prediction? That the plan would achieve its goal. What's the plan? The plan is to reduce one kind of lanes, increase the other kind of lanes. Lanes for pedestrians and cyclists. Okay, now that plan is 
there to achieve what goal? What's the goal? The goal is to attract more workers and shoppers to downtown businesses. And this plan is basically because they believe that by making downtown easier to reach and more pleasant to move around in, they would get more workers and shoppers in the downtown area. Hmm. All right. Which of the following would strongly support? Support the prediction. So now if we learn in other moderately sized cities, first of all, let's be sure. And uh, this is in line with the reason that a few of you selected that the things are different or may not be similar. Notice this word in other moderately sized cities. So in the passage, they're talking about one city and now they're saying in other moderately sized cities. So this sentence seems to be talking about other similar cities. Other similar. Let's not get confused by this word large and then this word moderately sized here. You're right. Large and moderately sized do seem different. They are different. But why would they use the word other if they were talking about completely unrelated cities? Delhi is a big city. In other small cities, this happens? No. In other big cities, this happens. Right? So here also, this word other is telling me that we're talking about similar cities. Let's continue. In other moderately sized cities, where measures were taken to make downtowns more accessible for walkers and cyclists, downtown businesses began to thrive. In other cities, such measures had a positive impact businesses began to thrive. Hmm. Now, see, businesses thriving doesn't directly mean that they were able to attract more workers and shoppers. I get that. Right? Can businesses thrive through some other way? Maybe same number of workers and shoppers are coming, but even then businesses are thriving? Yes, that possibility exists. No debate there. However, once I learn that in other, these kind of cities where they tried to make downtowns more accessible for walkers and cyclists, businesses thrived, then what happens to our belief? Do I now believe more that the plan would achieve its goal? Do I now believe less or is there no change in my belief? That's the question to ask, right? Once I learn that in these other cities, this is going on compared with before, my belief goes up compared with before. Remember that phrase compared with before. Therefore, this answer choice is correct. Also, you're right, Mohawk. But if measures that were taken to make downtown more accessible were successful, then these measures are also to make downtown more successful. Then I would expect that perhaps these measures would also be successful. These are, these could very well be different measures, but still my confidence still goes up. Hmm. Shall I again? Let's move on to the next one. All right, cool. Hmm. Let's take a look. A network, a major network news organization experienced a drop in viewership in the week following the airing of a controversial report on the economy. So this network uh, had a controversial report that they aired. And then in the week after that, they experienced a drop in viewership. Okay. The network also received a very large number of complaints regarding the report. What a bad report you guys had. Useless report. You guys are idiots or complaints. You shouldn't have done this. All right. The network, however, maintains that negative reactions to the report had nothing to do with its loss of viewers. So the network still maintains, yeah, yeah, we lost viewers, but we didn't lose viewers because of those negative reactions. Negative reactions had nothing to do with the loss of viewers. All right. Let's read the question. Which of the following, if true, 
strongly supports the network's position. What's the network's position? What's given in the last sentence, right? The network's position is that, no, no, no. We didn't lose viewers because of the negative reactions. That's their position. We did not lose viewers because of negative reactions. Um, negative reactions. Not the reason for loss in viewers. That's the position. All right. Now, what's this answer choice saying? This was not the first time that this network news organization has aired a controversial report on the economy. Not the first time. They've aired a controversial report before also. And such a report that has inspired viewers to complain to the network. Oh, so in the past also, they've aired controversial report. In the past also, uh, viewers have complained. All right. And then does this support that right now, the negative reactions are not the reason for loss in viewers? That's what we have to figure out. First question that comes to my mind is, boss, did they even lose viewers? This is not the first time that the network has aired a controversial report. Okay, so they aired a controversial report. They got complaints. Did they even lose viewers? We don't even know that. We don't even know whether they lost viewers or not. So anyway, it would be a next step to wonder about, did they lose viewers because of negative reactions or some other reason? We don't even know whether in the past they lost viewers or not. So this one does not support. Before I discuss any further, I would like for you guys to evaluate this answer choice. I've added one line in the end, which is also a part of option D. With this addition, and I'll launch the poll again, but this time I'll give you less time. With this addition, tell me whether this variation is correct or not. Hmm. So, this was not the first time that this network news organization has aired a controversial report on the economy that has inspired viewers to complain to the network. So they do, they've done this in the past also. And the negative reactions led to a loss of viewers in the past. Okay, so now at least the, the answer choice is talking about viewership. Earlier it wasn't even talking about viewership, so I couldn't see any impact at all. Now at least the answer choice is talking about the viewership. So in the past, and in fact, not only is the answer choice talking about viewership, but then it's telling us that the negative reactions led to a loss of viewers. So negative reactions were responsible for a loss in viewership in the past. When I hear this, then I'm thinking, oh, in that case, maybe right now also negative reactions are responsible for a loss in viewership. Maybe at best, at best. Right? At best, I would think, oh, it's happened in the past also. And that was the reason in the past. Maybe this is the reason now also. Now, what's the network's position? The network's position is that negative reactions had nothing to do with loss of viewers. Had nothing to do with it. And our objective is to support that position. You have to support that position. So basically, the right answer choice will increase our confidence that yes, indeed negative reactions have nothing to do with loss of viewers. This answer choice is not increasing my confidence. It's reducing my confidence. Now I'm thinking maybe the negative reactions were responsible for the loss in viewers. So for this particular question, this answer choice is certainly incorrect. It doesn't support, it actually weakens the network's position. How much does it weaken? That's that's another discussion, not for today. Maybe it weakens mildly, maybe it weakens a little bit. That's a different matter. But anyway, it's going in the opposite direction of what we are looking for. We are looking for something that increases our belief in the position that the negative reactions have got nothing to do with the loss of viewers. This one is actually making me believe a little bit that maybe the negative reactions are responsible for the loss of viewers today also. Why? Because they have been in the past. So anyway, it's 
going in the direction of reducing my confidence, definitely not increasing my confidence. Wrong. 33% of you, 33, one third of you said this one is correct. Let's look at another question. Rather, another answer choice, same question. The other major network news organizations reported similar reductions in viewership during the same week. Once I learned this, oh, everyone reported similar reductions. The other major news organizations reported. So all other or other major organizations reported similar reductions. Mm. So then also, do I believe that it was the negative reactions to my report that caused our loss of viewers? Or am I thinking, oh, in that case, maybe it's something more industry-wide, something more broad, something which is across for all everyone, right? I'm thinking, well, in that case, perhaps it wasn't my specific report and the negative complaints I got for my specific report. Perhaps it's something much bigger than that. Now, let's also be clear. Is it possible? Is it at least possible that others also aired the same report? Possibility exists, no doubt. Is it probable? No. Right? It's not like everyone would air the same report. It's not probable anyway. Plus, it's a controversial report on the economy. Um, would everyone air it? Doesn't sound probable. So these guys aired a report. They had negative complaints. They had a dip in viewers. Now we learn that, boss, everyone had a dip in viewers. So perhaps then the dip in viewers is not linked to the report and the negative reactions. That's the thought coming to my mind. Right? So basically, the position of the network gets supported. Now my belief in the position is more than it was before. So this answer choice is correct. In case it's not clear, let's take a detour to understand this. Let's say, um, let's say I played soccer yesterday. And now I have a sore stomach. And then therefore, my stomach is sore because I played soccer. Let's say that's the argument I make. And now you guys learn that Everyone in my home has a sore stomach. Everyone in my home has a sore stomach. Once you learn this new piece of information, do you believe more, less, or as much as before in the argument above? The confidence goes down, this one weakens, right? Because, oh, everyone in my home? Now, is it possible that everyone in my home also played soccer? Yes, that possibility exists. However, just when I learn this, then I'm compared with before, now my confidence does go down. Similarly, in this example also, is it possible that other major network news organizations also reported the same report? Yes, that possibility exists. You're not debating that, no, no, it's not even possible. However, it's not very probable. So once I learn this, my confidence does go down. Therefore, this answer choice is correct. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go through the passage. Last year, a global disturbance of weather patterns disrupted harvests in many of the world's important agricultural areas. Okay. So global disturbance of weather patterns impacted negatively harvests in many areas around the world. 
Worldwide production of soya beans, an important source of protein for people and livestock alike, was not adversely affected, however. What was not adversely affected? Worldwide production of soya bean. So weather had negative impact on harvest overall, but soya bean was still produced as much as before. Worldwide production was not uh, adversely affected. Indeed, last year's soya bean crop was actually slightly larger than average. Okay, not larger than the year before, but than average. So above average production that seems to be a good thing only nevertheless the weather phenomenon is probably responsible for a recent increase in the world price of soya beans hmm. so on the one hand production of soya bean has not reduced in fact it was above average last year despite the negative impact of weather patterns and everything at the same time at the same time the author is saying that it is the weather which is probably responsible for an increase in price of soya bean. Seems somewhat counterintuitive. I would think that, well, I understand how price might vary with regards to demand and supply. If supply goes down, for example, demand stays where it is, then I would expect the price to increase. Or if the supply remains where it is and the demand goes up, then I would expect the price to increase. Right now, however, I'm not given anything about demand. I am told that the supply is the same, right? Last year's crop was actually slightly larger than average. And before that also I'm given that the production was not ad adversely affected. So supply has not reduced yet the price has increased. I'm confused. I'm not sure why the price has increased. But anyway, that's the passage. All right. Now, which of the following, if true, provides justification for the attribution of the increase in soya bean prices to the weather phenomenon? Lot of heavy words, justification for attribution of increase in prices to phenomenon. What's the question asking us to do? We have to look for an answer choice that justifies that indeed the increase in soya price, soya bean prices is because of the weather phenomenon, right? Attribution of the increase to the weather phenomenon. In other words, yes, the increase was because of the weather phenomenon. We want to justify that. Okay. Now back to the answer choice. The world price of soya beans also rose several years ago. Many years ago also there was a price rise. That too immediately after an earlier occurrence of similar global weather disturbance. So in the past also there was bad weather. In the past also price of soya bean increased right after. Now, according to this answer choice, option C, nothing else. According to this option, do we know why the price increased last time? Do we have an answer to the question why? Is the answer choice saying that the price increased because of global weather disturbance? It's not. All it's saying is the world price of soya bean rose several years ago as well and that too immediately after similar bad weather patterns. All right. But why did it happen in the past? The option is not saying that. Let's be very clear. The option is not saying that in the past, weather led to increased prices. The option is only saying in the past, weather was bad and then prices increased. What is our job? I have, we have to justify the attribution. We have to justify that the weather phenomenon is the reason for increased prices. This one is only telling us that both these things independently have happened in the past also. Why did they happen? Was the increase because of the weather patterns? The answer choice never even gets into that. It's like 
let's say um let's say i tell you djokovic won the match um a few days ago and i was wearing a black t-shirt so he won the match because i was wearing a black t-shirt now in order to justify this now i tell you two years ago also djokovic won a match then also i was wearing a black t-shirt so have i justified my claim that he won the match because i was wearing a black t-shirt because two years ago also i was wearing a black t-shirt and he won the match have i justified that at all i haven't right even if, if in the past i was wearing a yeah had we said that i in the past i was wearing a black t-shirt and that i don't know reflected eyes in the opponent for the in the opponent's eyes and therefore he couldn't see the ball and that's why djokovic won in the past two years ago then sure then i would believe more maybe this time also the black t-shirt helped but simply saying that oh in the past also this happened and this happened doesn't increase my belief in the first thing was leading to the second this answer choice is also not even indicating that the first thing led to the second it's only telling me the two things happened in the past that's why this answer choice is wrong this one is wrong 42% of you thought it was correct all right now let's look at a variation of the same answer choice all right now in the past this answer choice is telling us that the price is increased immediately after and because of an earlier occurrence of similar global weather disturbance so in the past bad weather was responsible for an increase in price of soybean so that now does increase my belief that now somewhat justifies that maybe this time also the global pattern the global disturbance is responsible for the price increase right this one indicates that because this answer choice is directly saying that in the past the increase in price was because of the weather the original answer choice didn't have this phrase so we all we knew was that these two things have happened in the past also whereas what we need justification for is that the first thing is the reason for the second thing the weather phenomenon is the reason for the increased price a or b happened because of a all the original option told us was a and b have happened before also this one is now telling me b has happened because of a in the past which does somewhat help which does somewhat help so this one would be correct all right let's go through the passage the figures in portraits by the spanish painter el greco are systematically elongated the figures in the portraits are systematically elongated okay in el greco's time in that painter's time the intentional distortion of human figures was unprecedented in european painting so during that time no one would intentionally distort figures at least not in european painting it was unprecedented no one had done that yet consequently since no one had done this in europe as a consequence some critics have suggested that el greco had an astigmatism what's that a type of visual impairment oh he had some issues with his eyes that resulted in people appearing to him in the distorted way that is characteristic of his paintings so some critics have said that he had a visual impairment because of which he saw people in a funny manner the way he would um interpret a person standing in front of him was different it was distorted and then that's why he made those distorted paintings 
that's why figures were systematically elongated hmm. however this suggestion cannot be the explanation because this suggestion what suggestion the suggestion made by some critics what have they suggested they have suggested that this guy had a visual impairment astigmatism to explain what cannot be the explanation explanation for what to explain why he had elongated systematically elongated figures in his portraits because anyway uh, distorting figures was unprecedented in europe anyway no one was doing it at that time right so why would he do it perhaps he had a or not perhaps he had a visual impairment that's what the author uh, that's what some critics are saying what's the author saying though however this suggestion cannot be the explanation cannot be the explanation that's a very strong word right this basically means there is no way this suggestion can be the explanation there's no way it cannot be the explanation no way and we have to find a reason why there is no way that this suggestion can be the explanation why this suggestion cannot be the explanation that's what we are looking for hmm. so to make this thing a little bit more clear before we discuss the answer choice let's take a detour why don't you take a minute go through this passage and then tell me whether this answer here is correct or not this suggestion what suggestion his friend suggested that suresh had consumed too much alcohol this suggestion cannot be the explanation explanation for what for the fact that he was feeling nauseous this suggestion cannot be the explanation because cannot be the explanation there is we have to find a reason which tells me that because of which there is no way that this suggestion can be the explanation so if last month also suresh felt nauseous and he had not consumed alcohol then then can i say therefore this suggestion cannot be the explanation cannot not possible cannot basically means not possible think about it oh it's happened before also therefore it's not possible that now something different has happened does that make sense not really right this suggestion cannot be the explanation it is not possible for this suggestion to be the explanation because because last month also he felt nauseous and he did not consumed alcohol then that's why it's not possible for this suggestion to be the explanation that doesn't make sense it's still possible maybe the likelihood would have reduced but the possibility still exists we are looking for an answer choice that tells us why it's not even possible we're not looking for an answer choice that here says that okay okay all right fine so the probability has reduced or increased whatever we are looking for something that is a reason for why this suggestion cannot be the explanation that's why for this particular question this answer choice is doesn't fill in the blank this could be a reason for why maybe the suggestion is not an explanation also why probably the suggestion is not an explanation that's also okay but it this answer choice is not a reason for why the suggestion cannot be the explanation it's not a reason for that oh it's happened before also this so this cannot be the reason that doesn't make sense i did not i was not wearing a helmet yesterday and i rode a bike and i didn't get a head injury so i cannot get a head injury even if i'm not wearing a helmet that doesn't make sense right so last month also this happened that means that could still mean that it can happen now hmm is it clear why this answer choice is wrong
Okay, let's look at another one. Hmm. Okay, so what I've done is I've converted that fill into fill in the blank into a question. And I've replaced the word cannot with is it impossible? That's what cannot means. I cannot do it. I cannot, I cannot walk to Mars, which means it is impossible to walk to Mars for me anyway. So the question is, why is it impossible for the suggestion to be the explanation? So if Ramesh felt nauseous without consuming alcohol, does that tell me therefore it is impossible for the suggestion to be an explanation? Therefore, it is impossible for Suresh to have consumed alcohol and that's why he's feeling nauseous. Hmm? Based on what happened with Ramesh, now is it impossible for Suresh to feel nauseous because of too much alcohol? No, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. That possibility still remains. We are looking for something that tells us that makes the um, that that leads us to understand that the suggestion cannot be the explanation. It's impossible for the suggestion to be the explanation. So this answer choice is wrong also. Right? The key here is to be crystal clear about what the objective is. And the objective is there within the passage. This suggestion cannot be the explanation because you have to find a reason why this suggestion cannot be the reason explanation. And we know what the word cannot means. It's that understanding that we have to apply here. Now let's go back to our example. Before I do that, are you guys clear why both these answer choices are wrong as far as this passage is concerned? So the learning here is that we are not looking for a standard template answer choice. What's correct, what's incorrect depends on what the question's asking for. Maybe a similar answer choice could be correct for another question. But for this one, it's not. Hmm. Let's come back here now. There were non-European artists, even in El Greco's time, who included in their work human figures that were intentionally distorted. So some non-European artists also made intentionally or painted intentionally distorted figures in their paintings. Let's quickly recap what was our objective. This suggestion. What was the suggestion that he has a visual impairment? Right? Astigmatism. This last statement was this suggestion cannot be the explanation. Explanation for what? For elongated figures in paintings. Some maybe um, long, long head, whatever. Elongated figures in paintings. Right? We have to find why this suggestion cannot be the explanation. Why astigmatism cannot be the reason for elongated figures. So other artists also used to distort figures intentionally. Okay. So compared with before, I believe more than maybe, maybe El Greco also did it intentionally. Compared with before, my belief goes up that maybe this guy did it intentionally also. However, after learning what options E says, can I now say that astigmatism cannot be the reason for elongated figures. I can't say that. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for something through which the author can say that this suggestion cannot be the explanation. That's why this answer choice is wrong. It's wrong. This is a great example to highlight the importance of being crystal clear about what our objective is, what the question stem is, or in this case, what the uh, 
exact words were before the blank. And it's not just about, okay, such answers are always wrong or always right. It's about understanding what question do we need to answer? And then does this answer choice answer that particular question or not? Now, let me address one more aspect. I might even do a webinar on this in the future sometime. Um, many times what I find test takers do is while reading the question itself, they, dis they categorize. Oh, this one is a strengthened question. This one is a weakened question. This one is bold inference. This one is paradox, whatever. Categorize. It's not wrong to categorize, but categorize only when you are certain that it, the question falls under that category. I find that people rush into categorizing. They categorize even before they are crystal clear about what the question is asking for. And therefore they categorize many times incorrectly. This one, for example, is not asking us to strengthen or weaken. This one is not asking, okay, compared with before, does my belief change in whether astigmatism was responsible for the elongated figures? This one is asking me for a reason for why astigmatism cannot be a reason, cannot be the explanation. And that's why this answer choice, which might have been correct in another scenario is wrong here. So the whole mindset that, oh man, it's so confusing. Such answers, I never get why an answer is here, right here. It was wrong there. There must be some underlying logic that maybe you didn't get. Critical reasoning on GMAT is completely logical. If it seems as though it's um, random, as though it doesn't make sense, then it's perhaps that we haven't understood the logic yet. Okay, that was the last question I wanted to share with you guys today. Tell me then, what have been your takeaways from today's session? That's a question I usually ask in my classroom course also. Let's discuss that. Cool. All right. Take care then, people. Bye.